Let's look at how to configure Git, a client and a server, for communication over either HTTP or HTTPS. So first of all, I'm going to jump to my server. So I have a server right here, and I need to have a terminal up. So on the server, I need to have Git installed. I need to have my web server installed. And if I'm going to do HTTPS, I need to also have mod SSL for my SSL portion. So I'll do yum install git HTTP D and uh, mod SSL. So you get all these installed. Once I get them installed, the next thing I need, I need to do is figure out where I want to have my repositories, my Git repositories stored. So because you can put them anywhere really, but I want to make things easier. I'm going to go to var www.html. I can see this is an empty directory, but I want to store my repositories here. So I will create a directory for my repos right here. So uh, repos. All right. So I've got this repos directory. I can go in this directory and I can create any repos I want to create. So let's start by creating a project. This would be my hello project. So I'll make a directory hello. And go into that hello directory. All right. In here, I want to now create my create this as a repo. So in git, or in git, and I want to make this a bare repo, so I want to be able to just check in, check out, but this is not the actual place I want to be making commits from. I just want to be committing to this directory. So I'll do bare and init, and that will create this repo right here. Next, I want to make sure that I can communicate with this repo, and one thing you need to do is do a git uh, update server info. Otherwise, you get all kinds of errors about communicating, not finding stuff, nothing being there. And I'm going to do a git config http dot receive pack. And so that's true. Now, if I wanted to see this configuration, I can look around in my directory. I can see this config file, cut that out, and I can see that now I've set this received to true. And so I should be able to receive stuff here. Now, there are still a couple more problems with this repo. First of all, I'm going to be running Apache, and Apache runs as, well, Apache, not root, which means that it'll have no rights to this directory. So I need to get out of this directory and do a CHO to Apache. And I'll do the entire hello directory recursively right that. Okay, now it's owned by Apache. <clears throat> the next big problem is that I have SE Linux running. So because SE Linux is running by default, I can either turn SE Linux off or I can set the SE Linux context type for my hello directory to be something that it can read and write to. So the LS minus capital Z, I can see it is HTTPD, sys, content t. I want to change that to chcon minus t. HTTPD sys content rw t. And I'll do the whole entire directory and subdirectories. So that makes it so that now SE Linux will not be in the way. The next big thing I need to do is configure it so that WebDAV can run. Now, I installed Apache, but I haven't done anything with it. Now, when you install Apache, it does get some of your uh, web dev stuff installed, but it's not turned on. So I'm going to go over to my etc, httpd, config.d directory. Over here, you can see a couple of scripts. Um, if you have your own certificate, or you want to get your certificates, create certificates you want to mess with, or modify the ssl.com file to point to your certificates. Right now, I just have my automatic default local certificates, which will cause a problem later, and we'll see that. I'll just show you how to get around that. But I'm going to do a 
file right here. So I'll do my git. It doesn't matter what you call it, but git a conf is what I'm going to call this one. And I need to tell it my information about my repository. So do location. And this location is inside of my, well, inside of my Apache root. So it starts with var www.html, and then inside of that, I have this repos directory. So I'll do repos. Then I'm going to do my settings here. I'm going to make a turn dab on, dab on. I want to have my auth type be basic. I want to be my auth name. Uh, let's call this my git repos um, my auth user file uh, let's have a file right there in that repos directory so I'll do var html and um, let's call this one let's put it in the repos directory because I have this hello inside of that but I'll do a Let's see, my HT access, uh, HT PASSWD, HT password file, and that will have my password in it. And then I want to also require login. Valid user. And then I want to close this location. All right, at this point, I am ready to go. I can just restart my server and it'll be ready. It'll start looking for that file. However, it can't read the file, but that's okay. Because there's no file. So I save that. So let's go make the file. Remember, it was var www.html repos. And I wanted to create a file right here. So I do htpasswd. And I want to see for create. And the file I'm going to be creating is my html.httpasswd file and I'm going to do a user joseph because that's me and I'll make a password aloha123 aloha123 you can now see there's a file created I can look at this file at ht access or ht password and I can see this password right here as long as I did everything correctly it should prompt me for a password if I try to go to that directory. So let's try that out. So I'll go ahead and start up Firefox. It's probably the first time Firefox has ever been started on this machine. That's okay. I will then hit my... Close that. All right. So I hit local host. And you can see, oops, Firefox is not running. Well, actually, Firefox is running, but Apache is not running. So I do systemctl start httpd, and I probably want to enable it at the same time so it'll start automatically in boot time. And while I'm doing this, I probably want to allow the firewall as well. So do firewall cmd add service equals http and https. And I want to make sure both of those rules are permanent. And right there. So now they're both open. It's ready to go. I can, I should be able to connect it now. Where is it? Hit localhost. It comes up with testing. Now I do repos. And it prompts me for my username and password. So my username is Joseph. My password is aloha123. And it goes in there. I can see this thing. I don't want to say that. All right. So we know it's working. I click on this hello. I can see my repo right here. It's all there. Everything's looking good so far. Um, web dab should be up and working because I started the Apache web server. Now it's time to jump over to the client and configure the client to communicate with the server. So over here to a client machine. And this client needs a terminal. Now the client also needs to have git installed. So do yum install 
git and it installs. And once Git's installed, I needed to configure a few things on my client machine. So I'll do git configure, actually git config, and global. I want to have a username for committing some of that. So I'll make this Joseph. That's my name. And my email address. So user email. And make this a joseph at example.com. I do also when I'm pushing, I want to do a push default simple. All right, so now this part is configured. Now I know that my username for logging into that remote server is joseph and my password is aloha123 and i can save that or i can just wait until it it becomes an issue so let's just wait until it becomes an issue so i'm in my home directory there's not much here but i want to create a projects directory so i go into projects and i want to check out that project so how do i do it well i need to do a git clone so i do git clone I do HTTP, let's do HTTP first. And it's over in server.example.com. And it's in the repos directory and it's called hello. So I will check that out. And it prompts me for my username, type in Joseph, my password, hello, uh, hello, uh, one, two, three. And it says you appear to have cloned an empty directory, a repository. So I can see that. And I didn't like typing in my username and password. That was kind of annoying. So let's go ahead and edit something. So do nano. And in my home directory, so utility slash, I can put a .net rc file. And in that .net rc file, I just need to type in mush machine. And this is for server.example.com. And the login would be Joseph, and the password is Aloha123. If I exit out, now I should not be prompted. So if I go ahead, I can delete that thing, re remove hello. So now I can see it's gone. If I wanted to clone it again, this time it didn't prompt me for a username and password because it used the username and password in my net RC file. And now you can change permissions to make it so it's less readable or things like that. All right, now I want to actually put something in the project. So I go into a hello. I can see there's this .get file. And you can go in there and you can see configurations. But I want to create something in here. So I do touch and do readme.md to create a file. I want to do git add dot and it'll add all files that are not added already. I can do a git status to see what's in what state. And so there's no initial commit yet, but these changes need to be committed. So let's commit them. So to get commit minus m for message, new readme file added. Doesn't matter what your comment is, just type in whatever you want. And then I do a git push. And it pushes it to the server. And that looked beautiful. Now, what if I didn't want to use HTTP? I want to use HTTPS. So let's get out of this directory. Let's just remove this thing and recheck it out. So it's all removed, it's gone. So I do a get clone, and this time when I do a get clone, I want to change it from HTTP to HTTPS. And it says, uh-oh, issuer certificate is invalid. What I could do is go back to the server and get a valid certificate, or I can tell my client I don't really care about SSL verification. So I do get config global and http dot ssl verify false and 
that I just don't verify. So now let's try cloning it. I clone it and it clones just fine. I can go into that directory again. And I can see my file that I committed earlier is still there. I can type in git log and I can see that my new readme file was added. And I can see the comments, everything there. It's all working. So that's beautiful. And that is how you configure and set up a Git server using HTTP and HTTPS and also a Git client to communicate with that Git server.